for it. I'm saying I that just part. said it. I just said it. So go ahead and read okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> the Ugly Tree is a comic book series created by Abram Aiken. That's it, me. It's a story of a young woman who must team up with horrible monsters to save her family from a madman. The Ugly Tree is a horror comedy. If you like the movies we talk about on this podcast, you will definitely see the influence in this book. You can check it out, The Ugly Tree, on Facebook. The first issue is for sale now. The second issue will be available soon. Probably not so soon. Probably not slow. that soon, right. yeah. <laughs> I'm working on it. Given your track record. <laughs> okay, welcome to Meet Your Monsters. My name is Abe. I'm Kathleen. I'm Colby. I'm Matt. Okay, if you're at home, Meet Your Monsters is a podcast in which I show my friends horror movies that I love, and we find out if they can overcome their fears and love them too, or if they think my taste in movies sucks. Give us the, the synopsis of our first movie. This week's movie was Brain Skin. Yes, Brain Skin. It should be noted that the synopsis is sinister. It's the sinister oh, synopsis yeah. is the name of this segment. I'll just try and read it sinisterly. You're already pretty sinister. <laughs> It was directed by John Flynn and written by Andrew Kevin Walker and stars... Well, the biggest stars in the movie are Edward Furlong, who plays Michael. You may have seen him in Terminator. Weren't there like four people in this movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was, it was a pretty small cast. <laughs> and Frank Lagan... Lang Langella? Langella? I think it's Langella. Langella. I would go Langella, but I, I never met him. So. Langella. Um, Lingia? Let's call him Frank L. <laughs> yeah, Frank L. <laughs> Detective <laughs> Frank L. in our film. Frank L. Frank L. He's the bomb. Is anybody going to get that reference? Frank L. Bomb. <laughs> oh, oh, Wizard of Oz, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, I got it. But it was L. Frank Bomb. Right? Oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was literally impossible to get. <laughs> All the pieces were there. It just wasn't a rain stray. Anyway... <laughs> Yeah, Frank Langella is Detective Hayden, and T. Ryder Smith plays the trickster. So basically, Edward Furlong's character is kind of a loner and a tech geek from the looks of his room. A bit so of a pervert. Like, yeah, <laughs> pervert. Yeah, a bit of a peep and tom. He's a, <laughs> he records his next door neighbor. Yeah, he's getting he's undressed. Technology in all the wrong ways. <laughs> of the right ways. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty into the technology stuff, judging from his room that had like 5,000 computers. And I gotta say, and I love how he's got that Igor thing. That I thought, Igor. like, if, if I we could that. make an app, like on an iPhone, mm -hmm. yeah. millionaire. If I, could, if I could buy an Xbox One and then reprogram it to where I could say, Igor, change the channel, instead of Xbox, change the channel, yes, I might, it might be worth the money. Yeah. Yeah. Monster, yeah. The monster is busy, it always says <laughs> in the <book. laughs> Sorry, continue. All right, well, yeah, he's portrayed as this kind of, uh, like, outcast kid, even though it doesn't really seem like that since he was in a room full of people in his club that he started. Yeah, his horror club was surprisingly <laughs> successful. Yeah. yeah. None of my horror clubs yeah. have ever been that successful. Yeah, I never really had a horror club. <laughs> I don't have many clubs. So you're in one now, down yeah. there. We've got four people. Yeah. We're kicking ass. Yeah, and his... His dad is off on business stuff, and his mom is dead, but that doesn't matter because it never comes up again. It really doesn't. You know. He has a limp because of the knee accident. Oh, I thought that right. limp was like, it must really tell his footprints is like one's back here and then one's up front. Eventually he is mailed a video game, and he plays it, and the video game is basically him playing a murderer. He it, might, it might be worth noting that he, he ordered it. It wasn't just sent to him like out of nowhere. Yeah, it he wasn't did, like a, he did a want demo. Demo. good candidate, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. Yeah, it didn't just show up and then <laughs> screw him over. Oh, that's true. He did order it. I forgot. Yeah, he called him. Mm -hmm. five, five, but then five, he's five, really eight. surprised when it shows up too. <laughs> yeah, he did seem kind of like Brian <laughs> Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he plays that and he enacts a murder, and then he later finds out that he enacted a real murder via virtual reality yeah. and then he's forced to play the game again by an what would you classify the trickster as an apparition it's like the evil host of the game yeah. that <laughs> comes through the TV and he's visited by a techno apparition yeah, there you go That's I like the scene in the first murder when they 
they stop at the kitchen and he's got the row of weapons to choose and it's like tongs and a cheese grater <laughs> and like a frying pan and then the knife I wish he would have went with the tongs I'd like to see how that worked <laughs> the cheese grater he like put the tongs he could like hold his nose closed <laughs> while he's sleeping so he's like <laughs> I think if it was a video game I would choose the tongs too cause why not yeah like who yeah. cares yeah <laughs> I would grate that some bitch to death <laughs> cheese grater <laughs> that'd be a slow death uh. well let's use that one big side which you make the cheese like slices with it was oh like there, a you box there you yeah. go yeah, yeah, you yeah. just grate his throat <laughs> throat grater <laughs> <laughs> coming soon <laughs> there, there was a yeah. band in my high school I just want to throw this out there called gaping throat wound <laughs> and it was like a stick figure with blood squirting out of it was their logo and the first song was cheese grater <laughs> gaping throat wound <laughs> an awesome name also he, so did he stab him in the eye with the knife I couldn't tell like he just held he, it I think he, he, he chickened out like he was gonna and then he like held it away and then he went out oh, with the hell and then he yeah. just, just stabbed him in the mm-hmm. back But that actor guy was a true professional because he had that knife really close to his eye. It was just like hanging out. Yeah. Uh, he was you're like... <laughs> 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 I've also seen this other trick that they use a lot in movies. Like if someone's choking them. Uh-huh. Like to make it look real, they'll get someone else. Was it you who was telling me this? No, I don't think so. They'll just like give him the sleeve of whatever the guy that's supposed to be choking him is wearing. And they'll just do it themselves. Oh, <laughs> that's brilliant! That is brilliant because then, then they can't like yeah, overdo they can't, it because they, they don't know his yeah his limit. But they can really wrench down. And it's like, well, that's pretty smart. Yeah. That's pretty, I like that. <laughs> After he figures out that the murder he thought was a game is real, he's visited by the trickster, who tells him it was real. The or, techno apparition. The techno apparition. <laughs> Great name. With Prince Harry. Yeah. That's not in my book. <gasps> <laughs> there was no Prince Harry. It's kind, it it's kind of Prince Prince Harry. Harry. A little bit Where like did the Prince beginning? have a red yeah. mohawk? Well, you know what? That was kind of mullety. But yeah. it was like kind of mullety, like a little poofed up, and kind of like the beginning of Purple Rain. That's true. Not so much towards the end. As a Prince expert, do you accept this? No. No. <laughs> In fact, I don't think we're friends anymore. No. <laughs> She could probably tell you line for line. He was dressed red. similar too. He's dressed like Prince. We can admit that. More David Bowie-ish. Somebody made the comparison already about him being the spawn of the Goblin King and the Jareth. Leprechaun. <laughs> Jareth and Leprechaun. <laughs> Does Leprechaun have a name? I'm the Leprechaun. No, I don't probably know. Probably something super racist like Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick oh, <O'Malley. laughs> Here goes a Patrick. I guess it is kind of racist. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Oh, I never thought of that. But anyway, back oh, to yeah, okay, sorry, so the, yeah. the trick sinister sinister synopsis. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, he's committed the murder and he has to, he's kind of forced to play the video game again to fix the mistakes he made in the first murder, so... He murdered that one guy, but left clues, so he has to play the video game and again. He, he kept the foot. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. took the trophy. He, he took the trophy That's right. foot. While murdering, he he took the foot and put it in the freezer. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He found it because if you want it to last a while, like, you got to put it in the freezer. Yeah. It's like soup. <laughs> yeah. Like a homemade soup. <laughs> so yeah, he's forced to go back each time to fix the mistakes of his first crime, and uh, I'm not sure how much into detail I should get into like that because well he took the, the oh, foot to bury it in the woods we forgot That's to right. say spoiler That's alert exactly the dog oh. got retroactive um, spoiler alert <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna spoil the hell out of this movie <laughs> oh, I'm sure we've done quite quite a bit of we're that already a lot of people <laughs> so are gonna yeah. go pop this movie in yeah, and like, they're like oh fuck it okay, fuck they told the whole movie <laughs> bro. it's still good you still yeah, watch if you it. haven't seen brain scan by now you should have. That's good. <laughs> Edward Furlong's second best movie. I'm buying into that. Yeah. What else has he been in besides Pecker. Oh, yeah, Detroit and Pecker? Detroit Rock City. Detroit Rock City was. Detroit Rock City was good. I it like was a funny movie. movie. Yeah. American History X. Oh, oh yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. American History X. Something that he got like super big acclaim for. Yeah, he, he did do another. Yeah. I think it's a tie. Because American History X is, you know, it's good. But, but I will say nothing's ever going to be Terminator 2. Nothing's yeah. going to be Terminator yeah. 2. Yeah. That's everybody Plus in that movie, that's American their best History movie. American History X a lot. Yeah, it's, that's true. It's yeah. too much. <laughs> that's true. 
Yeah, if you were in Terminator 2, you'll never do another better Yeah, movie. you're going to top that. James mm-hmm. Cameron hasn't topped it either. He's topped it money-wise, but not, you know. Quality. He's, it's made more money. It's but quality, it's Terminator. Yeah. What yeah, they needed was, like, a liquid metal avatar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should have but Maybe played by the same guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a blue Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the ears and the tail. <laughs> Come with me if you want to frolic in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so back to the sinister yeah. synopsis. So yeah, the mistakes keep piling up. Like yes, the off the witness. Yeah, he has the second to, one. Yeah, his second crime is he has to off the witness from the first murder, and then. But they don't show us that one. It it just ends up. Um, yeah, he tries he, to record. He's for some his, reason, he's he killed black... his best friend, yeah. and uh, he's trying to make a confession to the police, but. Yeah, for some reason he blacks out for that for Sausage that video dick. game thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sausage Dick Kyle. No, he was piece. he was the one that called him Sausage, Sausage dick. dick. So he he would have another. What did they call him? Pickle Dick. Kyle. <laughs> yeah, Kyle. <laughs> His name was Kyle. Goddamn it. <laughs> but yeah, so he has to kill the witness from the first murder, and then the third time was the confession, right? No, the third time. Oh, the he third had time to go he was and, running from the search party. He right? had to go get his footprints. Yeah, yeah. They don't Which care. is, yeah. It was also weird that he had to be in the video game to do that. Like, I don't know why he had to sit down and because he wouldn't remember otherwise. It was explained by the trickster. Because he would remember. He he had to go back into the game so he could remember where his footprints were. Oh, yeah. okay, I missed yeah. that. Part. Yeah. Because he went in the woods to bury the foot, and then he ended up right. burning the foot, right? Yeah, because no, the, the dog took the foot. Dog took no. the foot. He got the foot back. Wasn't he? Didn't he um, bury or burn the bloody clothes, and then he buried the foot? Because that's why the dog has the foot at the end. Oh yeah. Mm. <clears throat> why did he not burn the foot? Because it smelled bad. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. So I think he was burning. Barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's a lot like yeah. Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dog in it. There's a dog in Terminator 2. Remember, it was even the same kind of dog. It yeah. Just named yeah. Max. yeah. <clears throat> German Shepherd. Oh, yeah. Well, this well if you saw Terminator 2, you has it. Folk. You gotta remember Max is of course. German Shepherd. Yeah. And he's in machines. He's all with machines. It's just okay. like John Connor. I'll buy that. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, and the the fourth time he enters the video game is when everything starts kind of unraveling and crashing down on him because his uh, would be girlfriend that he creeps on through the whole movie it ends up being a witness, so he has to off her. Yeah, well, and the trickster he tells him all like the things he's trying to help him with, and like, and then he tells him tells him that he's not gonna rat on him no matter what, and he pokes out his own eyes and. <laughs> So yeah, like, he can do literally, all this to me. literally tells him, "I would. They can break my fingers. They can electrocute me. They can poke my eyes out. Yeah. Demonstrating these things, yeah. and then he fucking rats him out." Yeah, he did. <laughs> the cop walked in there at the end. Yeah, he's like, oh, "I got a right. surprise for you." I was gonna say up until that scene, it was like that was the type of friend I want to be. Is yeah, what trickster was, and he's yeah. like, "Okay, but but the cool thing, the cool thing about this movie, is that." You find out that it's all in his head. Like the whole the whole movie is the game, yeah. and usually usually after after uh, back to Wizard of Oz, <laughs> after you've seen Wizard of Oz, you get pissed off when you see an ending like that because you go, oh, it's all a dream. Yeah. But this really worked for me because it was cool. You yeah. know, the idea yeah. that that all of that was in his brain, and I like too that you see the cop tell him to leave at the first of the movie, and so of course that would be the cop chasing him through his oh, through his. Yeah. Uh, subconscious you know yeah. mm-hmm. and and he's totally creeping on the neighbor girl so of course she plays a big role and I'm like oh, this is really cool because you get to see you know everything that's going on in his head how it plays into the video game I yeah. thought that was very neat mm-hmm. which begs a question would you guys play brains game fuck yes I would oh, play that yeah. game I wouldn't because I I feel guilty like I'm playing Grand Theft Auto and I run over like <laughs> a pedestrian I honestly last time I played it I got out and called the ambulance because I was like this poor guy you can just, call the ambulance yeah already? you just press like emergency and then it's like got the three different like you can call the police the fire department does it make the home. cops not chase you I haven't tried that yet if you call the ambulance because hmm. yeah. I always mow people over and then the cops 
come after me. And, and not like the missions where you gotta kill somebody. I'm like, oh, can I just talk to him or something? <laughs> <laughs> Surely I could get this motorcycle. Yeah, it was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so let's let's go on to to the meet your monster part of this. So the idea here is that I I show you guys movies that I love, and then. You tell me if you if you loved it too. Um, I saw this movie when I was in high school. I hung out with this kid named Sam McIntyre, and I went to his house, <clears throat> and he said, "What movie do you want to watch?" And I picked something out, and he said, "No, we're watching Brain Scan." I'm like, "Well, what the fuck do you have me pick for?" Yeah. But I love Brain Scan, so I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, so what did you guys think? Did you? Well, I've actually seen it before. I saw it when I was a kid. I was like nine, uh-huh. and it was on HBO, and I thought it was badass back then. Uh-huh. I still think it's badass today. Genuinely a good horror movie. I like it. I I didn't like it. It yeah, doesn't really have anything that I look for when I watch horror movies. There's no real violence, no gore, no boobs, no no yeah, humor, really. There's yeah, like maybe one or two we'll lines. We'll get to the boob uh, count later. <laughs> 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 You're going to be our critical critique. After I, that. Um, I thought it was... I thought it was alright. I think uh, it was definitely ahead of its time because it came out in 94 and The Matrix came out like a year later and they kind of already did the plugged into a virtual reality that's so real it's and the matrix came out 99 yeah. oh it, oh it did didn't it yeah yeah, yeah. i don't so, know the so first was... like 10 minutes into this movie though it felt like kind of 80s and like the poor quality of it yeah but then it, the it, could, it could have just been edward furlong <laughs> putting your mindset into the 80s <laughs> yeah he threw you back it kind of played on a lot of the tropes you see a lot like um like every time some new technology comes out, like it seems like the movies that get made about it, the reaction is always like, "Oh, technology bad. If we do this too much, it's gonna it's, be bad." And yeah, that, and, uh, that was the climax we didn't talk about. Is he ended up smashing all of his yeah, he literally rebels against his own technology that he's kind of built all around. Oh, himself. did he smash Igor? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> man, that was the he best part. He smashed his talking <laughs> telephone. See, if he were hung onto that, waited like ten years. Just saw that as an app on iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Brower would have been a millionaire. And then another way it was super ahead of its time is that, you know, he was literally blaming video games for violence, like by being too plugged into video games, by being too disconnected from other people. And so. I was like, where are the parents? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Literally, where are Wait. the parents? <laughs> huh. His dad was off on business. That's a spoiler alert and his mom was dead dead. he was alone a lot yeah kind of a lonely guy um the the movie had a big influence on me growing up because i think that's why i've always had or tried to have some sort of horror club just because i always like that i fucking love death 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 like i'm totally gonna (laughs) use that in some way um he was peeping on the neighbor girl you can see that in my comic, it's and it'll be an issue too. You can see me in every... doing that on the yeah. basis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually a silent witness crime of the week with you in that one. <laughs> nice things you can do it on your iPhone, so it just looks like you're texting. Yeah, out the window. <laughs> but she was into it, man. He would peep on her, but she yeah, yeah like, she had she pictures was... of him. Yeah, they so were they peeping each other. Cre- yeah, well, they were that was probably which that would have been a great relationship. <laughs> yeah, like no, you know, none of the. None of the baggage. That's Just probably like, why she didn't want to date him at the end was because she kind of liked this like voyeurism yeah. game they were playing. Yeah, so they got all the way to just like sending like pictures of their dick. And yeah, vagina that was each other. that was like sexting back before <laughs> they actually had cell again phones ahead of its video. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This if only knew how many character. trends were created by this movie. <laughs> yeah. Would have been funny if the twist at the with their relationship was that there was just a role playing game that they like to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He pretends he's whacked out on some crazy video game, and, or no, I'm just saying like they're role playing, like stalking each other, like that's their thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, so so for the people that didn't see this, um, in his horror club, he gets busted by the teacher or the principal or whatever for. For showing these violent movies, and they say it's it's not obviously appropriate for school, and he says he has to approve any any sort of uh, thing he's going to show after that. And I love at the end, after being pretty much destroyed by this game, like it totally. Well, it actually him up. turned his life around. Though. Yeah, it made him a better. He got outside. Made a better he person. wouldn't ask Rachel out. Yeah, it it made him a better person. 
But I love that he gives the game to his teacher to, to the, play. No, the principal. <laughs> yeah. The principal, yeah, because you go like, oh, that poor guy. Not not liking horror in the first place. You know, if you think about it, like, from what I hear, it's a lot like a DMT trip, you know? Like, it freaks you out, but, like, it changes your life for the better. That's true. There's there's the fifth trend. Or I should say, I've heard that's true. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah with no DMT. Probably Did expensive. you see that no. documentary? No, I just heard the Joe God Rogan. Molecule. Yeah, I watched that on YouTube. That's pretty crazy. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Was it a lot like this movie? <laughs> no. <Just> like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe if I took it, it might be like that movie. But, <laughs> but every time I hear Joe Rogan's voice in it, I want somebody to fight. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> combat now. World class smoking. <laughs> Okay, so Kathleen didn't didn't care for the movie. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, you liked it, Matt? I thought it was alright. Yeah, just just, just alright. Okay. Just okay. Would you like, want to watch it again? Like, I'd, it would soon? have to be a long time in between viewings. <laughs> I think. Okay, okay. watch it again. Yeah, I like it. Watch awesome. it all the time. I think it's great. I, just, <laughs> the only thing that really sticks out in my mind about it is the trickster. I mean, you like the trickster? I, I thought it was. Yeah, I thought he was played well. I did too. That's the one memorable yeah. thing, I guess, that I get from it. You made some deep insight into like the human psyche. <laughs> 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 and he he <clears throat> stabbed his own eyes out, and then later got his eyes stabbed out again. Yeah, so. this time it was like sewage instead of blood. Yeah, the first time was was proper blood. The second time was like secret ooze, yeah. Ninja Turtle ooze. Okay, well, let's move on then to the terrible trivia. Kathleen, what have you got? Um, you know, I didn't find a lot on this, but a um, few things. James Marsh, who played Kyle, the best friend, was 27 years old playing a teenager wow. in this. Wow. Damn, he didn't look Jeez, 27. He looked like he was 15. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the girl, Amy Hargreaves, was actually uh, 24. I remember I see that. <laughs> yeah, she looked, yeah, she looked, looked elderly. elderly. I remember we talked about this before where on... Um, Oh, what's that? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Cameron was like 36 <laughs> playing in high school. Yeah. Like, what, in Ferris he's looked 36 his whole life though, yeah. until he started looking 50. Like, I, could, yeah. I could be wrong about the age, but I remember she told me and I was like, what? Didn't the year after they made The Breakfast Club, they made St. Elmo's Fire and it was the same cast, but they were playing like 30-year-olds? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That's so funny. Anyway, what else you got? Um, Edward Furlong, who played Michael. Um... He apparently has a really successful music career in Japan and is what? still so popular with too. Japanese girls today. Wait, who does? Edward Furlong. Has a music career? Uh-huh. And Word. in fact, his How debut never... single, Hold On Tight, um, beat out Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You um, for no, the number one spot on the Japanese that, charts. That had a more <laughs> Japanese vibe to it than Whitney Houston did. Is that true? I've never heard him sing. I've never heard of Is him he singing. singing no. or, well, or playing it doesn't or say where does. I found it, but it later says that um, he can play guitar and piano. So I assume oh. he sings too, because yeah, that's what little other. you know Japanese girls probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody noticed this, but in in the rooms of both Kyle and Kimberly, they both had Aerosmith posters hanging up. And in real life, Edward Furlong appeared in their Living on the Edge video. Uh -huh. Small coincidence there. Yeah, um, also some symbolism with that. Get a grip. Because <laughs> it wasn't a... It was very subtle. Very subtle. <laughs> <The poster. laughs> And he, um, he should be getting. He had that necklace that was an arrowhead too in the movie. I don't know if that's connected, but yeah. he likes Aerosmith. And the the cop's name was Officer Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> All those Steven Tyler outfits we saw. <laughs> Lots of spandex. I remember oh, yeah, like, Steven Tyler played the, the love interest. <laughs> you know the trickster kind of looked like Steven Tyler in the face. Oh, did he had the lips? <laughs> he did. Have <laughs> In the big red mullet hawk. Yeah. <laughs> My friend Nor, when we were in high school, thought Steven Tyler's name was Steven Aerosmith. <laughs> Just to crack me up. <laughs> Aww. Well, um, also, Frank Langella or Langella or. Langella. Langella. <laughs> Langella. <laughs> Jeez. We all found out earlier that he played Skeletor in the Masters of the Universe movie. So he was, in fact, Skeletor? Mm -hmm. okay, but. He also wins points because he says it's one of his favorite roles, and he did it as a gift to his kids because they loved He-Man. So 
He's a good father. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Walt Disney. You really took one for the team on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well. Is that bad? I never saw it. It was it pretty is. bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> like, it was, it was one bad. where when you're a kid and you see it, you're like, it's so awesome. And then when you watch it as an adult, you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> but that's bad. It's like the power <laughs> But as a He-Man fan, even as a kid, when I saw that movie, I was like, oh, <laughs> damn. It was and like it was, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, movie. it was like the Super Mario Brothers movie. And they were pretty confident in that movie, too, because it, like, set up for a sequel pretty well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Abe, calm down. <laughs> 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 all right. Is that Got all your trivia? One more for? thing for you. Um, Bill Corso worked on this film. He did the prosthetic makeup for The Trickster. And uh, as we were talking about before, not much to him. He had a fake nose, fake teeth, and kind of a red mullet, well, mohawk hockey like, wig. That's a nice rouge. David Bowie outfit. He kind of looked like the vampires from uh, Fright Night. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. With little he did. Oh, oh, yeah. Messed up like eye sockets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Well, anyway, he is still working today, and he's actually moved into the big leagues. He um, worked on The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, shit. And mm-hmm. the newest Indiana Jones movies. Or right. movie. The Crystal Skull? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then um, some of the X-Men movies, too. So. Nice. He did Shia LaBeouf's beard in that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I thought the, the trickster makeup, all that stuff was really cool, so I'm glad he's, yeah, he's yeah. moving on up. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Scary clown-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so back in the day, I used to watch Joe Bob's Bri- Joe Bob Briggs movies and he would uh he would always count the bodies and the boobs. And so I thought it'd be cool if we did that too. So Yeah. And we it's always important to note that we count boobs individually. Individual. So if there's, if there's just one hooter shot, we count that as one boob in the movie. Right on. I don't okay. know how Joe Bob did it, but that sounds good to me. That's how we're doing it. Right on. <laughs> yeah. It's 2014. That's um, how many boobs we had? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the boob count uh, was basically two. It was a glancing shot of each breast. Yeah, so it was basically weak. two. Yeah, it wasn't all that. And body, the te- technically the body count was zero. But in the what? dream world... But we got to see some people die. And there's that's four we're... deaths in this movie. Four bodies. Yeah. Hmm. Which was your favorite one? foot one? amputation? Um, that first murder I thought was pretty cool because you took the foot with it was like a it was like a VOP shot so you kind of get the feel like this is what it'd be like you know yeah and you didn't get to see Kyle go down no yeah, yeah they should have shown that because I think it would have been more dramatic yeah. but then but then you can't rationalize like why did he kill wait a minute was that his principal he got smashed by the logs no was I think Kyle's that was Kyle's dad wasn't it no Kyle's no, dad was the one that got shot. Oh, I thought they were... The guy that got smashed by the logs was just some random... uh, Just a neighborhood watch. Neighborhood watch guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think my favorite was the guy getting shot the shotgun. Yeah, that was something. That's true. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's all. It's uh, two boobs, four bodies. Right on. (laughs) Low low, uh, (laughs) low (laughs) count this 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 was quality over quantity, except for the boobs. That wasn't a quality boob shot. Uh, It wasn't a quality (laughs) shot, but, you know, she had... Yeah, two boobs is a lot better than zero boobs. Uh, I agree. Blows the doors off of zero boobs. (laughs) You're going to be disappointed (laughs) with that. I felt like she was teasing us. Yeah. She was was a tease, though. She would strip in front of him, and then later she'd be like, no, I don't really want to date you, but then I'll kiss you and have all these pictures of you. It was... (laughs) <laughs> that was in one of the dream sequences. So did she really have those pictures of him? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Found, he found him at the end when he went and asked her out. Oh. And he's like all relieved. Yeah, which is the weird. Trickster really helped him out, I think. It was like a self-help program. Trickster's like an evil drop-dead Fred. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That principal's going to come out a better man because of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll understand his students more. Yeah, that's going to be like curriculum in that he school He should have just had his horror movie thing not at school. He, mean, he had a house, about. like, totally home. empty. He could have just had his He did have there. a huge empty house. Yeah, and, and like, every gadget known to man. Yeah, yeah. he's like, you can watch it. Igor play Death, 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 <laughs> part two. Yeah. So, he would have got mad. Think of all the... Punani would have died. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Shut his, his Igor. Like poetic justice in here. That's true. He's got a big empty house, all that stuff. He could have been getting like... If he would have got crazy. that brain scan like at the beginning of the movie, it would have been a lot different. Because <laughs> the end like the last half of it, the third act would have been just him banging yeah. chicks. <laughs> <laughs> they all would have had red hair though. <laughs> 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 Well, they did have that makeout scene towards the end. That's him true. and the trickster. 
<laughs> he literally swallowed his face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he swallowed his whole head. <laughs> he got more action from the trickster than he did from his love interest. Yeah. Which is sad because Kyle Holy even shit, ends up with a like, girlfriend. That was like the Matrix 2. And remember he, uh, Agent Smith absorbed people? He absorbed <laughs> him like Agent Smith. That's true. That's true. This movie was a trendsetter. I think The Matrix <laughs> just ripped off brain scans. What happened? Sure I think you're right. Happened. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. Only with they, they're like secrets out. They're like, we're just gonna rip off brain scans, throw some fucking kung fu in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot more tricksters, which call them agents. And then it'd be way better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's up for debate. No, it's not debatable. <laughs> that's yeah. the best movie ever. Matrix was badass. Was it? I kind of felt like the movie very subtly implied that his dad worked for a technology company that may or may not have made Brain Scan. Am I reading too much into that? I don't. I, w- I didn't get the impression that they made Brain Scan, but maybe that's where he got all of his cool gear. Mm. Okay, so on to the critical critique. Okay. We just find a critic who trashed this movie, Scott and, Weinberg, and we try to name. get sweet revenge. You yeah. fucker for shitting on our movie. Yeah. Um, and Kathleen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> Stay very quiet. <laughs> this review is by Scott Weinberg and Kathleen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> okay. He starts off. There's more to it, but he's a he's just a dick, and I don't want to glorify him by reading his whole essay here. So it says, uh, as far back as 1983, with. Joe Sargent's Forgotten Nightmares, which, if he didn't like this movie, and he says Nightmares is also bad, maybe Nightmares is also bad. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> Anywho. You're making a sound low class. Okay. <laughs> I'll, st- I'll start from the beginning again. These professionals As- have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> is- Matt told me that in, uh, in film school they taught him if they... If you have dogs barking in the background, that's how you establish a poor neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if you want to make it seem like the neighborhood's kind of, like, dilapidated, you just add dogs barking in the background. Because <laughs> rich folks don't have dogs. No, not that bark anyway. They take the vocal cords out of them. <laughs> they certainly don't Disney growl world. and fight while we're in the middle of doing something. <laughs> Settle down, you bastards. Okay, sorry, Colby. We'll take it, we're taking it from the top. Okay. okay. As far back as 1983 with Joe Sargent's Forgotten Nightmares, B-movie makers have been trying to forge together the worlds of horror movies and video games. Since it's a pretty stupid idea to begin with, the results are nearly always atrocious. My apologies to anyone who managed to enjoy Albert Payan's Arcade. Brain scan is hardly an exception. Uh, Edward Furlong, he of the distinctively nasal whine, um, A pointed out there's a spelling error here, how he spelled distinctively. How um, he misspelled distinctively. Yeah, yeah. Um, stars as a teenage horror junkie who comes across a devilish video game. He doesn't, like, stumble across it. He, yeah. he calls and orders it. Yeah. yeah. It's not really stumbling. Yeah. Oh, the thing I ordered in the I middle. stumbled over my Amazon package. <laughs> Nobody yeah. stumbles over a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the next morning. <laughs> uh, while enthralled by the game's power, our hero stalks into the night to kill people. Obviously, he reawakens as computer desk with no recollection of the murders, which isn't true. He remembers each one of them and discusses them in detail. Mm-hmm. Asshole. Um, yeah, this fucking guy is just in our movie. Me. Can't even write a solid review about the movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure he's even seen the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This guy's not a big. It's here okay. Um, that's pretty much it. Unless you consider tiresome plot threads and prototypical police procedural stuff worthy of any special note. The flick. And there wasn't much procedural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy, like, he dug t- some ashes out of a fireplace. That was about his fucking... Without a warrant. Yeah, he just fucked <laughs> it. Yeah. The guy was like Judge Dredd. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that this guy saw the same movie we saw. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, the flick makes very little sense. Uh, the kill scenes are tedious at best. What the hell does that mean? And going through the motions of killing a person? <laughs> this guy's seen so many death scenes. Oh, I've killed so many people already. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you point out, there's only four. <laughs> and it, you know, it's not like it goes on and on. 
Yeah, you don't even get to see one of them. Yeah. Just... <laughs> the acting is uniformly rotten. Bullshit. Try not to die laughing. Yeah, that's bullshit. What a prick. Yeah. The acting was just fine. There might have been a few places here and there, you know. Yeah. But it's a fucking good movie. Yeah. Um, it's just try not to die laughing when her fur longs. Uh, he puts in quotes best buddy. I don't know what like what he's trying to imply there because it was his character's best friend. It's not yeah. like they, <laughs> they did a poor job. They were he said, in like, fact. Yeah, hey, this is my best friend. <laughs> when he killed him, he's like, I kill my best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, character bops on screen, and the personification of evil here, the trickster, seems little more than a thinly veiled effort at creating another Jason Freddy Pinhead icon. What? No, this was a fantastic. Techno apparition, as Matt has, yeah. has, I think that's a new classification. I'm copywriting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, unfortunately for the filmmakers, and luckily for us, the annoying Dolt never earned sequel one. Uh, the trickster is more garish and annoying than he has anything resembling scary. I disagree. Like I think that was a pretty scary character. Yeah, he creeped me out. Yeah. He comes all through the TV. Maybe shit. like this guy really had like an experience like this, and he had like <laughs> trash. Like, I don't think that guy's had he works many for brain experiences. Scan yeah. <laughs> There's not a damn thing on display here that well travel. It's he wrote van. He meant that well traveled horror fans haven't seen three hundred times before and mm-hmm. less obnoxiously. He mentions that the guy who wrote this, we we mentioned this, uh, Andrew Kevin Walker also wrote seven. Which was a pretty good movie, movie. Yeah. yeah. And Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, it's a solid script. It's a solid movie. That, that's what he says. It's a solid script. Like, you can't even give the guy credit saying, like, a good script. Yeah. It was solid. In my book, it was solid. <laughs> <laughs> it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. It worked. Yeah. It was, in fact, written down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's our uh, our critical critique. The next the next segment here is the Quetzal Quotal. <laughs> We've got to change it to something easier to say. Yeah, I'm like, I'll no, never say so that funny. out loud. <laughs> because the, the quote book Quetzal Quotal is like a Aztec demon dragon thing or something like that. But I thought it was clever. No, it's Quetzal Quotal. He was that guy. The, it was like Icarus. He flew too close to the sun and his wings melted. But he had like wings. He made himself out of wax and feathers. But there, it's also a demon thing. We'll have to look it up. For the, for, for the next locked away for the next Quetzal <laughs> Quotal <laughs> that's a fucking mouthful <laughs> okay but okay so the idea is that we were all supposed to say our favorite quote of the movie none of you remembered to take a quote down my, well, my, I like Sausage Dick he called his friend a Sausage yeah, Dick yeah that's probably my yeah. favorite too which like we discussed earlier that could be a compliment yeah. depending on the sausage <laughs> yeah. you're comparing yeah. it to <laughs> Yeah. Like summer sausage dick. <laughs> That's like a solid like ten inches of dick. <laughs> like a three inch circumference. I don't know yeah. math. It's it's big around if you're at a summer sausage. Ho- hopefully they not come the... in all sizes. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like the Chris- quality like summer. the Christmas summer These sausage. Are $3.99. Like fucking... These ones are like seven yeah. ninety nine. So you have to like say the... like you having guests over summer sausage dick. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we've all called our best friend sausage dick before. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's totally Those common are all place. sausage dicks now. <laughs> I'll throw around a sweet tits every now and then, but I don't think I've ever dropped a sausage. <laughs> you but I, dropping I, it. I'm I'm definitely adding it right now to my lexicon. <laughs> <laughs> After I look up lexicon to see if I used it. Cur- <laughs> okay, so so for the Quetzal <laughs> quotal. Um, you guys like that one? Mine was uh, the trickster when he's when he's explaining what's going on. He says, uh, <clears throat> "God damn, I can't even read my own writing." He said that. No, he didn't say. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So um, our our uh, Michael Brower says it doesn't make sense, and he says it's not about making sense; it's about. Death, death, death. And I thought that was so fucking cool. That was pretty badass when he said that. <laughs> yeah, because he's just like, you know, talking all about how the experience is all about killing and how it's so much better than just watching it. And I think that was fucking sweet. Yeah. I how love prophetic it. the trickster was. <clears throat> yeah. He knew his shit. Great horror movie. You know, since it was all in, Yeah, since it was all in his head, <laughs> yeah. like, were those all, like, Michael's thoughts? 
like I don't know. That's an interesting. See, that's another that's thing that I like about that movie is you can really kind of you can let it yeah. wobble around in your brain. And yeah. anybody got any last things to say about this fine movie? Let me mm. check here. Mm, makes me miss Edward Furlong of yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> now that he's all kind of. I do kind of miss Edward Furlong. He was fun to watch. Weird, yeah. yeah. Now he's all sorts of like domestic assault charges and. Oh, there was really? a time when he got Going drunk and tried to get the lobsters at yeah. the Walmart. Well, it's because he's in a band now. You know how crazy musicians yeah. are. Yeah, rock stars. Actors yeah. are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's the end of Meet Your Monster for this week. Thanks for hanging out with me and and watching this movie. Sure um, uh, and thanks for listening. Anybody who happens to be listening, if you want to follow along, next movie. Uh, next week's movie will be Monster Squad. See you then. See ya. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.